We're blessed to have two worship leaders like we have. And it's just awesome. So important that we have people who are in tune, not in tune, in tune, in tune with God. It's good to be in tune as well, I must admit, if you're a worship leader. But it really is a blessing to us. So we're in 2 Samuel chapter 6. You know, we should really be encouraged and excited as a church. And I think this passage that we read demonstrates why. As we have gathered here tonight in Zion Baptist Church, we find ourselves, we find ourselves in a place that longs to feel the heartbeat of God in the midst of us. We mustn't take that for granted. We mustn't ever take that for granted. Things are beginning. Things are happening slowly and in God's way. But the exciting thing for us is that there are a gathering, this is a gathering of people whose hearts all are longing for the same thing. And that isn't common. It's not common. How sad is that? That in the church of God, or in the church that bears his name, or claims his name, it's not the usual thing for the people who are gathered to all want to feel the close and powerful presence of God. We can have church without God. Do you feel the privilege of being part of a fellowship that wants Jesus? It's really precious to us. We want that presence of God right in the, the heart of our gatherings. We want a deeper and deeper and deeper encounter with God. But here's the other thing that should excite us. Not only do we want this powerful encounter with God, we want to sense Jesus, but remaining faithful to the teaching of Scripture. We want to feel Jesus close by, but we want to experience him according to the Bible. Because when that happens, wow, it's special. When we know that this is what's taking place, then that's a different level altogether. And as we look at this passage tonight, I, I really do pray that all of our hearts would be stirred to continue to align with the heart of God and to seek Jesus by exalting Jesus, by lifting him up, to seek Jesus by presenting Jesus and marveling at Jesus, to do it all according to God's method, according to his ordained methods. Well, we all want God to establish something here in Zion Baptist Church. We all want God to establish a season of 
spiritual blessing, supernatural blessing here in this church. Do you want that? Oh, deliver us from coming to church. We don't want to simply come to church. Hallelujah. We've said that so often. We want to experience God, but his way, his way. The title tonight is New Carts or God's Holiness. New Carts or God's Holiness. King David had this pressing burden in his own heart to see the ark of God, the symbol of God's very presence, to see that return to Israel, to see it back in the city of David, to see it take its place in Jerusalem. That was the, the burden in the heart of the king. And since the Philistines had given up the ark, it had remained in the house of Abinadab. Verse 3 tells us that. And David wanted it back. King David wanted it where it should be, at the heart of Israel. They set the ark upon a new cart, it tells us in verse 3, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab. In the Psalms, I think it's Psalm 132, it's just coming to my mind. Yeah. Psalm 132 speaks of this situation where the ark of God was in Abinadab's place. And verse 6 says, Lo, we heard of it at Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of the wood. That's stunning. Here is the ark of God lying out in the field. Wow. So it was, le it was left uncared for in the house of Abinadab. And David wanted it home. David wanted it where it should be. Don't you want it where it should be? Don't we want it where it should be tonight? We want Christ where he should be. We want him here. We love him. Our hearts are burdened for him. The thought of Jesus Christ, where he is ill thought of, where even those who call themselves his people don't care too much for him. That's heartbreaking. We want Jesus here because we love him and this is where he should be at the heart of his people. We're not the only gathering of the people of God, but we want him here in this place. His rightful place. You see, the rightful place of Jesus Christ is always at the center of the people of God. And so David had this burden in his heart, and I'm sure there's not one of us tonight who don't feel the press of that upon our own hearts. We want Christ to be honored here in this place. 
We want Christ to be exalted here in Zion Baptist Church. We want the world to see Jesus Christ here in this place. So I've already said there are other gatherings of God's people. But I'm here as the pastor of Zion Baptist Church. This is our place. And we want Jesus here. And we want to feel Jesus here. We want to know he's here. We want our hearts to be touched by his presence here. And we want to display that Jesus Christ is here. And that Jesus Christ is here to the glory of God. Oh, may it be the case. So David wanted this. And it was a good burden for David to have. It's a good burden for the king to have. But he was so desperate that he made a mistake. And we find that in our passage. David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Judah to bring up uh, the ark of God, those uh, whose name is called the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubim. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab. Oh, well, that's all right. It's a good desire that David has to have the, the ark back with the people, at first reading, that seems to be perfectly all right. David had a burden in his heart and he set about doing what had to be done to make that burden, to, to exercise the burden, to accomplish what he desired. He just got up and he got on with it. Get it done. We'll go and we'll get the ark and we'll bring the ark back to where we want it to be, to where it should be. But he made a mistake that we need to be determined that we don't make. They put the ark of God upon a new cart. That was the mistake. In 1 Chronicles, chapter 13, verse 1, talking about the same episode, David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seem good unto you and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel and with them also the priests and the Levites which are in the cities and suburbs that may, may gather themselves unto us and let us bring again the ark of our God unto us. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. David put the ark on a new cart to bring it from Abinadab's house to Jerusalem. He consulted men about how he should exercise his burden. He should have consulted God. He should have brought his burden to God. Have you ever done that? If you've never done that, that's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. And that's what the church needs to do all the time. If God lays something on our hearts, the, the first thing we should do is not ask advice from others. The first thing we should do is go to God with that burden. 
and ask God to explain it to us, to show us what it is all about. It's not wrong to take godly advice, not at all, but it should not be our first response when God is pressing something on your heart. Take it to God. That's why God gives us the burden so that we would take the burden to him and ask him how this is going to work out. I feel this in my spirit. Oh God, what have I to do? Because God knows how to exercise that burden. If you're sitting here tonight and there's something in your, in your heart and God is pressing at home and, and, and you're thinking to yourself, right, how do I sort this out now? Okay, I'll take advice from as many people as I can and ask them, what should I do about this burden? The answer is what you should do about that burden is take it to God. It's why he gave it to you, so that you would talk to him about it before anything else. And so if we have a burden on our hearts tonight for the power and presence of God to manifest itself here in this place, that's who we should go to. How, does the, how, how, how will this come about? Speak to me, says God. Don't get ingenious about it now. Don't create anything. Speak to me about it. You want my presence? You want to feel me close and powerful? Let me tell you how that's going to happen. Zion, I believe that's where we are. We are at tonight. We are all excited. We are anticipating a move of God. We want it so much. We want it so badly. And the reason we need to bring it to God, and I'm sure we are, is because we want it to happen God's way. We want to be faithful to him. Turning to Almighty God. That really excites me tonight. And I'll tell you why. I have had so many conversations over the last few months about this situation. People wanting to feel, to encounter God and be changed by God. But they've said in conversation, it has to be God that does it. It has to be genuine. Folks, Zion Baptist Church wants the real thing. Hallelujah. You know it's the real thing when you don't do anything to make it happen. It just happens. Well, it happened last Sunday night. Not because we did anything, but because God did something. And we were, without talking about it too much, we were up the back singing. After the meeting, just started singing. People were coming back in the door because they heard what was, they heard us singing. Things were beginning to happen. On Friday, we didn't want to leave. We just kept sitting here singing. But you see, we didn't do anything to cause it. And the joy in my heart is that we realize that we can't and we mustn't try to make it happen. We receive these things and we, we marvel at them and we rejoice all the more at God because it is God that does it. Oh, Zion, aren't we blessed that we have had a people here who know that it has to be real. Anybody can whip it up. But it, no, 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 put your whip down. Just praise his name. Just speak about Jesus. Just exalt the Savior. 
preach the gospel and let God do the rest. Does that not excite you tonight? That, that should excite us tonight. Because that's there's nothing complicated in that. We don't need to call a planning meeting and sit down with a team and say, right now, how, how, how are we going to organize this? Michael, what, what's your suggestion? Oh, well, I think we should. And then out comes the flip chart. If people still use flip charts. That's how long ago I was in a general meeting like that. Flip charts out. <laughs> Thank the Lord God Almighty that we need none of that. All we need do is exalt the Savior. We just need to come into this place every single time we're gathering and the thing in our heart should be, let's lift up Jesus and tell the world about Jesus. Let's just exalt the name of Christ and see what he does whenever he does it. But our pleasure, our joy, is to speak his name. Who wants the phony? Who wants the fake? Well, I don't. We want the real thing. And so the burden that comes upon us, we don't sit down and plan it and work it out. We bring it to God. We exalt him. We lift up his name. We glorify and honor him. There is none like Jesus. There is none like our Savior. That's God's prescribed method. That's how it's done. That's how it has always been done. The real thing. God, God blesses that kind of message. God's not interested in your new car or mine. It's the old method. His prescribed method that comes to us when we consult him about what he's calling us to do. So David failed to consult God. He consulted men and so they put the ark of the, of the Lord upon a new cart. Doesn't God's ark, doesn't God deserve a new, a new cart? Shouldn't we Put the ark on the best. And the answer is no. We should deal with the ark of God according to the word of God. The ark of God should be carried by the Levites on their shoulders. It shouldn't be anywhere near a new cart. If David was doing it biblically, that's how it would have been done. The Levites would carry it. God's prescribed method. In First Chronicles, Chapter 15. Verse 2 says, Then David said, This is having learned the lesson. David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them hath God chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him the Levites and no one else in that same chapter over in verse 12 he said unto them ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites 
Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. The due order of God is that the ark is transported by the Levites and by no one else. Deuteronomy 10.8 says that the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. That's his chosen method. Oh, it thrills my heart tonight that we are in a place where we want to do it according to the way God wants it done. That is a thrill. So not only should we, be, should we be thrilled that we have our hearts to see Jesus Christ exalted in this place and to see him manifest his power and presence here in Zion, but we should be re rejoicing that, that we are part of a fellowship who want to do it the right way, who want to do it the right way, the way God has ordained it should be done. That's why we've known the little touches in the last few weeks. It's because we exalt Christ. Or we have been exalting Christ. I don't want to say we exalt Christ and nobody else does. We have been praising the name of Jesus, lifting him high. And God has given us a little touch. And it's beautiful. But we want to see it deepen and grow and multiply and that happens by a constant focus upon the greatness and the glory of Jesus that's God's method for us you see the ark of the covenant as we know is a picture of Jesus Christ the ark of the new covenant And although we may be tempted to because of our deep desire to have Jesus manifest here in this place, although it might be a temptation to the flesh, thank the Lord that we realize that we are not at liberty to carry the ark of the new covenant in any other way than by preaching the gospel and exalting Jesus Christ. We want Jesus to fill this church. We want him to fill every area of this church with power and holiness. And we're determined not to use the new carts of the world. New carts are bound today. The church general is filled with new carts. God won't honor them. God won't honor them. God will only honor his prescribed method. Do you believe that? Of course we do. This church has preached it for years and years. Exalt the Savior. We preach Christ crucified. There is no foundation except Jesus Christ. And when we keep focusing on Jesus Christ and him crucified, when we keep building faithfully upon the, the true and only foundation, God moves in power. God will bless that. Zion, you need to believe that tonight. You need to believe that the message of the gospel will be blessed by Almighty God. You need to believe that by exalting Jesus Christ, we will see the power of God unleashed. 
because God will confirm the greatness of his son. There is no ministry which exalts Jesus Christ will also see failure in the eyes of God. None. Whether it be a preaching ministry, whether it be worship leading, whatever the ministry is that you have, if it's a ministry that is focused upon exalting Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty will bless that ministry. He will always bless when his son is exalted. Isn't that marvelous, Zion? What a promise we have. Does your life exalt Christ? Does your ministry exalt Christ? Does this church exist to exalt Christ? Yes, it does. Whatever I do, I do for the glory of God. Is that not the cry of our hearts tonight? Whatever this church preaches, it will be for the glory of God. Whatever work this church gets involved in, it will be for the exaltation of Jesus Christ or it will not be done. We don't need any new carts. We need the holiness of God. We don't need any new carts. We need God to come in mighty power and bless what he has ordained with a presence of holiness that is overwhelming. Zion, do you want that tonight? Do you know what that does? That causes us to worship like never before. That causes our hearts to just open up and pour out what we have. Because we've been exalting Jesus. God has been pouring back. And we just end up exalting Jesus all the more. Oh, we praise his holy name in this place. We love him in this place. Lord Jesus, there is no greater treasure in Zion Baptist Church than you. There is none greater, none more holy, none more powerful, none that we can look to. There is no other hope. He is our hope. He is our peace. He is our future. He holds us up. And he'll never let us down. He is the light that guides us. He is the fiery cloud that guides us when it's dark. He is the cloud that guides us through the day. The cloud of the glory of God. That is Jesus Christ. And when we continue to praise him and lift him up and glorify him, God Almighty will bless. He'll bless. But when we try to make it happen, by doing all sorts of other works and constructing this or that plan. That's a new cart. God doesn't need a new cart. Look to the old ways. Preach, as Romans 10 tells us, preach. Tell them about me. How can they believe on me if you don't tell them? Lift me up. Because when I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Don't you want to see that happen here? Oh, how beautiful would that be to see men being drawn, men and women being drawn to this place because they're being drawn to Christ. Well, they'll be drawn to this place as they're being drawn to Christ. As long as we lift him up, let's keep lifting him up. He's the focus of all we do. New carts, well, they too often obscure the message. And the thing that becomes of interest is the uniqueness, maybe even the strangeness of the new cart. When God is not interested in a new cart, he's interested in Jesus Christ being exalted as he deserves to be. That's what God has ordained. Ah, but there are those 
within the church, the name church, who say, but these new carts, these new methods are filling some churches. People are coming in. Ah, but hold on. Hold on, because you see this passage pops that bubble. Look at David's mighty profession, uh, procession in the opening verse. David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel. 30,000. My goodness. 30,000 men. Verse 5 says, David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments. 30,000 playing musical instruments, praising, singing and dancing. A huge congregation. So you need to see this. A huge congregation, 30,000 people playing musical instruments, and I'm sure very talented. And then you look and you see verse 7, and you see that despite the 30,000 people playing musical instruments in praise, Uzzah is struck dead by Almighty God. My goodness me, I thought God would approve of 30,000 people all marching with David, praising musical instruments. Yet in verse 7, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Wow. What was it that killed Uzzah? What was it that led to Uzzah's death? Carrying the ark in the wrong way. Putting the ark on a new cart ended up in the death of Uzzah. Uzzah's death would not have happened had they carried the ark on the shoulders of the Levites. Because we're told in this passage, the oxen shook the ark. In other words, the oxen stumbled and the ark was about to fall off the new cart. And Uzzah put out his hand to steady the ark. My word, that's all he did. He put out his hand to steady the ark and God struck him down dead. Because Uzzah put his hand on the holiness of God and God could not have it and the reason he put his hand on the holiness was because the oxen stumbled and the ark was about to fall and the reason that the ark was about to fall is because it was on a new cart and not being carried on poles between the Levites do you see the difference do you see what happened not only did Uzzah die because he touched the holiness of God. David's mission failed. He failed to bring the ark back to Jerusalem at this point. Verse 8, David was displeased because the Lord made a breach upon Uzzah. Verse 9, David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David could not remove the ark of the Lord. And he left it with Obed-Edom. But you see, David failed to bring the ark back to Jerusalem as he set out to do. And the reason he failed to bring the ark back, the presence of God back to Jerusalem, was because he did not do it God's prescribed way. You see, when we try to use new carts and we try to be ingenious, we end up touching the holiness of God. We end up playing about with the holiness of God. 
And God prescribes his method so that we don't do that. We don't lay hands on the holiness of God. We exalt the holiness of God. We carry the holiness of God in the the approved manner. Those who are chosen, just like these Levites were chosen to carry the ark, those who are chosen to carry the new covenant, the ark of the new covenant, the gospel, must do it appropriately. Who are chosen to carry the gospel? You and me, the priests of God. God has given us commission to carry Jesus to the world, but to do it according to the work and plan of God, not according to our own minds and our own desires, but according to God. And when we do it according to God, there comes the most beautiful blessing from God. Zion, you're awfully quiet. Do you feel this? Do you feel the the need to do it appropriately? Aren't you thankful then that that's the desire of the people here? I want more and more and more of God. We want more of that experience of God. We want to be overwhelmed and taken into new realms by God. We want to be in a position where we cannot leave this place. Why? Because God hasn't finished with us. Don't you want to be in a meeting where we can't get up and go home? And the reason we can't get up and go home is because God is still dealing with us. God is still filling our hearts and fanning the flame. And all we can do is sing out and sing out. I'm going nowhere until God lets me go. Do you want meetings like that? Surely we do. I want to be in a meeting with my brothers and sisters here in Zion where we're sitting thinking to ourselves, my goodness me, I don't think I'm getting to bed tonight. Hallelujah. I don't think I'm getting home tonight. Or as Peggy said, we'll be getting home not in the same day we came. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. May that be the case here in Zion Baptist Church. How does that happen? By lifting up his name by speaking his beauty. We belong to the most glorious and wonderful Savior. That's God's prescribed method. Blessing will come. Blessing will come to this place as we continue to align ourselves with the heart of God. This is my beloved son. This is my well-beloved son. That's how God talks about him. Even at the birth of Christ, the angels, heaven heralded the birth of Jesus. The glory of God shone all around at the birth of Jesus. My goodness me, that's our Savior. Shouldn't we be heralding the greatness of this God? The greatness of this one? Of course. And that's what we do. And that's what we intend to continue to do. To exalt Jesus and see the blessing come. Oh, we need to move on. Because you see, David left the ark, or he put the ark with Obed-Edom. In verse 11. The ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom three months. And so we remember Uzzah putting his hand out, touching the ark, being struck down dead. Now you look what happens to Obed-Edom in the presence of the same ark. 
Obed-Edom was blessed and all his household. My goodness me. Uzzah was killed. Obed-Edom is blessed by the same ark, the same presence of God. But you see, Obed-Edom was not just some random man that David left the ark with. It wasn't some random. Obed-Edom was a Levite. Hallelujah. Obed-Edom was a Levite. Look at First Chronicles 15. Verse 17. Verse 16, to make sense, David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers and instruments of music, psalteries, harps, cymbals, sounding, uh, by lifting up the voice with joy. And so the Levites appointed Haman, the son of Joel. Look at on at verse 18, at the end of verse 18, who is mentioned as one of the Levites appointed, Obed-Edom. Well, what's the significance? The significance is that Obed-Edom was in the line of the Levitical priests whose charge in Numbers 4.15 was to carry the ark of God. In other words, Obed-Edom was in the line chosen by God to carry and care for the ark. He was symbolic of God's prescribed method. That's why his household was being blessed by the presence of the ark, because he was in the way of God's ordained method. And we can look forward to that same blessing. We can look forward to that same blessing when we do it God's way. God will bless like he blessed Obed-Edom. Do you believe that there's a blessing coming? There is a blessing coming. I pray you're feeling it because it's a new thing that God's doing. I know the church has been blessed mightily in the past. Wonderful. But this is a blessing that's coming now. And it will continue to come and multiply as we continue to exalt Jesus Christ. As we continue to walk according to the method of God. As we continue to carry him and preach him as God has ordained. But do you know what will happen? When we lift him up and exalt him. When we simply preach the gospel. What will happen is that all the drivers of the new carts will call us old fashioned. They'll call us out of touch. They'll call us deniers of the realities of life and the issues that people are facing. That's what the new cart drivers will say. All the time God will be looking upon us and smiling and pouring out his blessings. We don't need new carts. We long for the holiness of God, the glory of God, 
that will be manifest to us as we continue to serve him the way he has ordained that we should. And the marvelous blessing that comes upon David He hears about Obed-Edom being blessed. It was told David in verse 12. It was told David saying that the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom. And all that pertaineth unto him. Because of the ark. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Now, David, as we read in Chronicles that we were looking at later, now David is transporting the ark into the city of David, into Jerusalem, according to God's method. And there's great joy, and there's great sacrifice. Every few yards, there's a sacrifice, singing and praising Delighted at what his people are doing. And you've got David dancing before the Lord. And saying to his killjoy wife, who complained that he was dancing before the Lord. Just you watch. I'm going to be even more undignified than this because I am dancing before the Lord. So sad when the Michaels Stop the dancing. Stop the praise with expression. Let us keep exalting Jesus. Let us keep lifting Christ up. And when we experience the blessing of God's presence, oh, let us just let it out to the glory of God. Let us express ourselves, church, like we've never done before. And may the Lord God Almighty be even more pleased when he sees this wee fellowship giving everything we have to the praise and worship of his holy name. There's going to be a blessing as we keep ourselves aligned with the heart and ways of God. May it come, Lord Jesus, and long may it last. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a great God who gives us the instruction that we have. And all we have to do is lift up the name of our Savior with hearts that are united to his to preach the gospel of salvation. We don't need to get creative, we just need to do it. And Father, we remember that David didn't need to build you a house. That you told him that you would build him a, den a dynasty. Oh, Heavenly Father. We just surrender to what you want and we simply ask that you would build your house and just give us hearts ready and open to praise you. We love you, Lord, and we lift our voices in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen.